Welcome back. I'm here today with Stephen Lynch. He's the Chief Operating Officer of Results.com. Steve, welcome to today's show. Alan, it's a privilege to be here. Thank you. So uh, let's, go, let's go through your background. How did you get to where you are today? Well, I joined uh, Results.com uh, around 10 years ago, and uh, back then it was a, a business coaching firm. Uh, and over the years we evolved into a business consulting firm. Uh, we looked to expand to North America. I moved up to North America in 2009 to set up a consulting firm in Canada. Uh, and also in 2010 I moved to the US to set up a consulting firm here. We developed a, a software product which, which became uh, very important uh, in its own right and we made the decision a couple of years ago that we were going to transform our company to become a software firm and uh, so results.com is now a software firm and uh, we have offices in Auckland and in San Francisco. Okay, so um, how do you suggest the entrepreneurs and managers manage their, their time wisely? You really need to know what it is that you're trying to achieve in order to be able to spend your time wisely. Uh, you need to have a vision, you need to have a strategy, you need to know clearly what it is that you're trying to do so that you can devote sufficient time to doing those things. And uh, I guess we see a lot of uh, business owners, business leaders being busy, spending a lot of time doing things but not necessarily the right things. So they're, they're busy being busy, uh, but are they spending a sufficient amount of time on, on doing what they need to do uh, to create a successful business in the future? Yeah, it's interesting, I guess, is that human nature, the fact that uh, people don't always focus? Or yeah. How do you get people to focus in that? Uh, yeah. Oh, probably, it probably starts with having a, a, a clear direction um, because most of the time spent in business is focusing on improving what is. You've got a business model and, and you're continually working to improve what it is that you're trying to do. But you also need to be very conscious of what it is that you need to create for the future. You know, what will be and creating what will be. And helping business leaders get very clear on what the future is going to look like and what they need to do to position themselves for success in the future and making sure that they devote a sufficient amount of focus uh, doing some of those things so that they're moving their, their business forward strategically. Now, um, Results.com, they're a software company? We are now, yes. Most of our history, we've been a management consulting firm. In the last couple of years, we've decided to actually cleave off our old consulting arm and, and I work for, for what is now our software company, Results.com. Now, Stephen, I understand you wrote a book. It's uh, called The Business Execution for Results. Oh, and, thank you, um, This came out this last year. Uh, uh, yes, yes, yes. 2014 published. winner of the Small Business uh, Awards. Oh. So, um, can you tell us about the book, uh, Business Execution, and what, what, what inspired you to do this? I, I guess that for most of our, our history, when we were a management consulting firm, we, we helped companies with that concept, which we call business execution, which is A, you've got to start with a strategy, but then B, you need to make sure that you're executing that strategy effectively. So, we would first of all help companies to create their strategy, but then we'd work with them uh, you know, on a weekly basis uh, to make sure that they, they took the right steps to implement that strategy effectively. And along the way, we taught them certain disciplines to help them become more effective at, at business execution. And, and the book actually takes people through that journey of, of creating your vision, creating your strategy, and then putting the right, uh, I guess, disciplines and processes in place to make sure that you execute that strategy effectively. And so, yeah, it, it takes people through that client journey. Yeah, when, uh, when you're working with companies and uh, trying to get people to focus, uh, not always easy, is it? No, no, and, and I guess that's where the, uh, the, the dashboard software that results.com now makes comes in. We were consulting with, with, with client companies for many years, we'd help them create their strategy, we'd meet with them frequently to make sure they're executing the strategy, and we wanted a way to actually make sure that they could visualise and see the results of, that they were getting from the work they were doing, and, and a way to track their key projects, and a way to track their key numbers. And, and we started out using Excel spreadsheets, which I, which I guess many companies still do to actually uh, keep them uh, focused on what's important in their business. And, um, but spreadsheets had their limitations. Not everyone in a company uses spreadsheets, and even if they do, they're not necessarily looking at them every day. Uh, so we developed the software product so that we could keep our client companies focused on, on what was really important. What are the, the key numbers that drive this business? What are the key initiatives we need to implement to move this business forward? And making those things visible by our software dashboard was the best way we found to achieve that, where you could keep the, the business leaders focused, but also everyone in the company focused on what they need to do to play their part as well. You know, when, you, when you talk about um, KPI, the key performance indicators, yes. uh, what, what do you feel is most important in measuring results with, with KPIs? Is there one that stands out more than another? I see a lot of companies, they start with, with outcomes, which, which are important, don't get me yeah. wrong. Outcomes at the end of the day are what matter. Uh, 
Um, but uh, sometimes you need to scratch a little bit below the surface and, and find, well, what are the key activities that drive those outcomes? What are some of the effectiveness measures that drive those outcomes? And bring those things to life and, uh, and uh, preferably track them and measure them in a way that lets people know whether or not they had a good week. So they can get to the end of the week and go, yep, I achieved my numbers. I, I can go home with my head held high and know that, yep, I'm doing well in my role. And if we can bring those sorts of numbers to life, then, then real magic starts to happen. When you see organizations struggling, is yes. there a common thread that you see that, that causes a struggle? Yeah, a couple of key things. One, they try to measure too much would be a, a common problem. Uh, another common problem is that uh, business leaders are, are optimistic by nature, I find, and they, and they can tend to set goals that are, that are too high. And... Uh, I guess the, the, the philosophy they're following is if you know, aim for the stars, you, you'll at least hit the moon. But, but what happens is that uh, when performance is made visible and you're using you know, dashboard software, it has the effect of making uh, people see clearly whether or not they're, they're making the grade. And if all they see is failure whenever they look at the screen, rather than motivate your people, it actually demotivates them, we've found. So it's better to set goals conservatively at the beginning and get people used to winning and then ratchet up that performance over time. That would be, uh, I guess, the two key errors I see people making. Welcome back. I'm visiting here today with Stephen Lynch. He's the Chief Operating Officer at Results.com, a company that's focused on helping companies get to the next level by measuring key performance indicators. Now, Stephen, uh, when, we're, uh, when you're in there dealing with a company, okay, and let's say I'm you know, two, three years old, I got, I got you know, a couple million of revenue, I said, get me to the next level. Um, I'm, uh, I'm going hand to mouth as most startups are, but, but what are the things that you help the CEOs to focus in on as they, as they try to get, get the companies ramped up? Gotcha. In terms of going to the next level, you do need to spend a bit of time focusing on strategy then. You know, what are the key things that we need to do as a company you know, to help us succeed now, uh, not only now, but also in, 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 you know, in years to come as well. So out of that will, will come some key initiatives or key projects or, or big rocks, whatever you choose to call them. What are those key things that we need to implement in the coming months that are going to A, improve our business or B, move us in our chosen strategic direction? And let's make sure that we capture those and keep those uh, alive in the business. So we'll be managing these projects, we'll be assigning tasks to make sure these projects are getting implemented effectively. Also the key performance indicators, the KPIs you mentioned, let's make sure that we get very clear on what are the key drivers of, of your business model and the key drivers of the, the key functional areas in your business. So you've got your projects, you've got your tasks, you've got your KPIs. What really brings it together then is, is running effective meetings where you're, you're, you're using uh, the software to make your performance visible, but then you're actually having uh, effective meetings where you're discussing that performance. You're checking to see what's working, what's not working. You're assigning actions to make sure that people have clarity and focus each and every week on what it is that they need to do to move forward. And it's that frequency, that cadence of, of, of meetings and running effective meetings that, that makes all the difference in driving a business forward in our experience. When uh, organizations are growing, oftentimes you'll get a mix of personalities in there. Yes. And there may be disharmony at the top of people thinking different things should be done. Yeah. Um, how do you get people aligned? Yeah, I mean, it's good that people think differently to start with. You don't want a whole lot of people thinking alike because that, that's a you know, group think is a real danger to be guarded against. So you want a diversity of, of, of opinions and viewpoints, particularly at the, at the stage where you're looking to make decisions. Uh, but ultimately, decisions do need to be made, uh, and uh, having an external facilitator can be helpful there to actually help align people around uh, the decision that is made. But you've also got to have, a, I guess, a, and we, you know, I've heard it uh, termed, disagree then commit. You disagree all you want during the, the stage where we're formulating strategy, but once we've agreed what it is that you want to do, we need to commit to that strategy and be willing to play our part to carry it out. And, and you, you've really got to have zero tolerance for people who, who try to undermine the decisions that are made after the fact. I'm visiting here today with Stephen uh, Lynch. He is the author of the book, Business Execution for Results. Stephen, where can a person uh, acquire your book? Uh, any of the, the, the online uh, platforms, Amazon, Apple, Barnes & Noble, etc., they'll be able to acquire the book at the best rate. And for more information on uh, getting in contact with you for your for coming to your company to use your software? Yeah, results.com. I guess it's an easy URL to remember, but if you come to our website, you're interested in having a look at our software, you can uh, register for a demo or a trial there. We'd love to, love to chat to you. If you're a small, medium-sized growth firm looking to do better, yep. we're, we're very happy to speak with you. Stephen, thanks for being on today's show. Thank you, Alan. It's, it's been a pleasure.